Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And I'm also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China, where we take knives of ancient designs from China and other cultures and make modern cooking implements from them. Now we also have another line of activities called our Billy Joe Rufido line, where we take modern kitchen knives, like here, and we remake them so they're actually better than they were originally and are more likely to fit their individual users. Uh, no knife was ever designed that fit every use, every person, and every hand. So we custom make the knives. Now, this is a chef's knife. Uh, it's a typical chef's knife, uh, available mass market. Uh, this one happens to be China. It has a serrated edge. Uh, serrated edges are not really very useful. Uh, they're sexy and they sell, uh, but chefs really want a straight edge. They don't want to destroy the fibers of the meat or whatever it is they cut with this serrated edge. The handle shape here is fine. It's a solid cast handle. In this case, we also have a solid cast handle, and we've already done some grinding on it, and we're going to generally reduce the size for a smaller individual. This handle was originally about this size. Now, some knives are made with cast plastic handles. That's what this one had, and that is what this pile of stuff is right here. These are the grips that came off some of these knives. And so we are going to replace that grip with some wooden grips that are much more comfortable and, well, sexy, if you like. So we're going to replace that grip with some wooden grips. And this design allows us to do that very easily because we have two pins here. Okay. We have a lot of steel to work with. So, yeah. Uh, this is an easy knife to work with, and incidentally, this happens to be under the Perfection trademark. Now, we've already ground the edge on this knife. I just wanted to see how it did, and it does pretty good. Uh, on the grinder, uh, it does edge, but then we have to take it and work it with a stone to actually get a good cutting edge on it. So it requires two processes. This, if you like, is an old-fashioned, traditional, half-tang slicing knife uh, made in Japan, 1950s odd. Uh, hard to say what's actually going on here. Uh, maybe there were some serrations right back here at the very rear of the blade once upon a time. Uh, but whatever they were, uh, they're pretty well gone now. The point is broken. Uh, the blade here just needs reshaping. It was a hollow ground blade, both sides. Uh, good steel. And this wood will clean up remarkably well. This is actually an uh, inexpensive rosewood, but it is a rosewood. So we're going to clean up and salvage this knife. Here is another one. Uh, this particular one is, let's see, this is an American made knife, made in the USA. Uh, reasonable steel, half tang, uh, reasonable grip. Uh, we're going to clean up the blade on this one. Uh, the blade is just nicked all the way up, up it. The point has been broken off, so we're going to reshape the point, clean up the edge, redo the grips, and make it serviceable again. Maxim Steel, it says. This is a stiff, heavy knife. Uh, made in Japan, Seiko City most likely. Uh, rosewood grips, rosewood scales. It has this 
ridge here on the top, which was fashionable to put on knives back in the 1950s, supposedly to give a better grip. Actually, what it did was irritate the hand. So we're going to grind this off and generally just refurbish this knife so it's uh, a handsome, much more usable knife. Not going to do too much to it compared to some of the others. This is a Sheffield, England blade. Uh, made for the export market, obviously. Uh, English have been exporting for a long time. Uh, the stuff they put out for shipment elsewhere is not as good as what they have for home consumption, as a rule. Uh, this little tang is about miserable. It did have a solid cast handle on it and served for that purpose. But for us, it's going to be a challenge on this thin a tang to retain the strength that we need in this blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to handle this for a small chef and we're going to put a grip on it just about this long and we're going to position some pins here in a rather unusual fashion to hold this tang in place. The knife will be quite serviceable when we're done with it but uh, we're also going to of course remove the serrated edge and put a straight edge on it. This knife is going to receive most work at all. Uh, Imperial steel, it says, made in Taiwan. Uh, good steel, heavy blade. This is going to be our stabbing blade for our Georgia hog hunters. And we're going to put a, a coffin. Uh, and we're going to put a buoy style coffin shaped handle on it. And so this will be a good thrusting and stabbing knife by the time we're done with it. So this one is going to require more work. This knife was covered in sticky tape, uh, supposedly to keep it safe from everybody. Uh, bought this one for a Goodwill store. The handle is cast solid. Uh, this one is made in China. Uh, a reasonable chef knife shape, but with this abominable serrated blade, with, but with this abominable serrated edge that we're going to get rid of. So uh, we're going to leave the grip like it is and rework this edge and get all this gunk off the blade. This is a Dexter boning knife. These are workhorse knives. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. They're good carbon steel. Uh, they're what a lot of processors use uh, here to process deer. A knife like this can process a hundred deer or so a year. They're reasonably inexpensive. They're stout. Uh, the blades are good. So uh, this one came <laughs> just terribly dirty. I mean almost beyond cleaning. Uh, so we went ahead and we stripped the plastic scales off and we'll put a good wooden uh, grip on it as well as uh, generally clean up and sharpen the blade. So uh, it'll be a handsome little bowling knife when we get through with it. So these, when we get through with it. So these are the projects we have in hand right now. This is our Heinkel's blade and we're going to see how successful we can be in working this solid polymer composition handle. It is obviously cast on an interior steel tang and we may be able to work it and smooth it and actually reduce its size on low, by low speed grinding on this machine. If we try it too hot, if we try it too fast, it'll just melt the plastic instead of grinding it. So we've got to work it very slow and see what happens. I 
think we'll be able to work it. Uh, it is actually grinding it off without melting. We have made some progress here and it is working but it's still leaving a lot of feathers right here but it's got it to a shape where we can now work by hand. Now we're going to work on this edge right here. We're going to remove this grind all the way by cutting a secondary edge on this side of the blade and remove all of this material up to the point. Well, Hankel put good steel in their blade. Uh, this was a hard edged finish, and we've now put a uniform bevel on it and stropped it. And it's giving a good, clean, sharp cutting edge all the way from tip to back. So, this is, this is going to be a very, very good blade. Well, we have finished with this blade here. And we have taken the grip and we have reduced it considerably in size. When we started, the grip was more like this. So we have worked on it some. Now we've also much improved the edge by taking those serrations out of it and putting a real keen edge. Now this is good steel and this edge is very, very sharp indeed. So uh, the blade is straight. So now this is a really effective chef's knife. So we're done with this in the Billy Joe Rubido fashion. You could put extra polish here on this grip, but we're not going to do that. That would take two and a half hours and add $200 cost to the knife, so uh, this knife is not worth that extra cost. As it is, uh, this is a $150 knife. You know. But, you have a chef's knife that's good steel. Heinkel made the blade. I modified the grips. I redid the edge. And this thing is going to really do good work. Now, its brother here has similar problems and more. Well, one thing, the blade is bent. Well, so we're going to have to correct that. It's also covered with this sticky, sticky tape and a few occasional dog hairs. And we're going to have to get that tape off. It also has a serrated edge, which we're going to grind away. And we're going to leave this grip just as it is. Or a larger guy. And we're going to leave this grip just like it is for a larger cook. So we'll offer our blades that will fit, actually fit various size people. This sticky adhesive to get off this blade. Uh, I'm cutting it with acetone and using this wire brush and then very quickly wiping. taking several applications to get it off. So if you ever have to protect a blade, you know, this is not the thing to do with it. I have the blade in the straightening block here, and we're going to see if we can take that bend out. We have to take it beyond the elastic limit, 
So even though the blade now is going Okay. That's as straight as I can see. I believe we've done it. Alright. Of the edges we've worked, this one has a softer steel. You can see the little feathers of metal standing up over the top of the edge. There's nothing we can do about the hardness here. Uh, there is one technique that we could use to bring up the hardness of an edge. We didn't have a handle on the blade, but since we do, well, there's not much we can do about it. So we're going to leave the handle. And if we heat treated the blade, well, that would raise the cost of the knife up. Oh, another hundred bucks or so. so. And this blade is probably not worth that. These steel feathers of the end of the edge here are unusually pronounced on this. That means this is this steel is very, very soft indeed. They left it so to put the little sexy looking but ineffective serrations on both sides of the blade. But the steel, yeah. Uh, we start off our blades with Hobie's knives of China and a hardness of about like this. Not wind up that way. We now have edges on two chef's knives. Uh, one of whose blades is significantly softer than the other. This has the softer blade. The Henkel up here at top is made out of a harder steel. Both are about the same thickness. Both now have equal straightness now that I have straightened this one, and now that we have all the miscellaneous adhesive and gunk off this blade, it's actually ready to put in the kitchen and go to work. There is a possibility of actually re-hardening this blade. On this blade, on this knife, the steel tang goes all the way back to about here. I can feel it being drawn to the magnet. Whereas on this knife, this English blade, of course the little tang didn't go hardly anywhere. So I could remove this grip, reharden the entire blade, and re grip it. And that would increase the knife, and that would increase the price of the knife from, say, $60 to $170 or better. So, is it worth it? Don't know. Possible. Uh, heat treating, this is an unknown stainless steel to me. Uh, if I heat treat it the same way I do my stainless steels, might and might not work as well, uh, but I think the result would be better than it is now for sure. So that's a possibility. It looks like we might have another kitchen test coming up.